Welcome to this episode of Living on the Edge with your host, Russ and Nate Moyer. Hi there, I'm Russ Moyer, the president of Eagle Worldwide Ministries and your host on Living on the Edge, your host for the Elisha Project. And we're doing some wonderful new things as we work with the Elisha Project. I'm going to share with you a little bit today about the prophetic journey to your spiritual destiny. This Elijah project is something that has been just all-encompassing. It's that next generation. It's that the sounds of glory, that next generation coming over the hill. The sound of the emerging prophetic voices. The new breed of leader. Living on the edge, leading on the edge. Living at the speed of change and living in the midst, right in the midst of chaos. In the midst of change, transition, and transformation. Everything that can be shaken will be shaken in this hour, in this season around the world. And what we need to do in the midst of all of this, we need to stand in faith. We need to be solid in who we are and what we're called to do. We need to know who we are and know where we stand and know what what it is that we believe in. And we need to grab a hold of the horns of the altar and begin to do what it is that you and I were called to bring to the forefront in this hour. This is the season for the new breed of leader to come over the hill. And there's a journey. There's a journey that every believer goes on. It's a prophetic journey. A prophetic journey that ends at your spiritual destiny. It begins with, uh, it, it begins with discipleship and mentoring. It goes from mentoring to achievement. From achievement to leadership and leadership to legacy. There are five basic foundational steps that every believer goes through as they walk this walk, as they take this walk, this journey, that they're on spiritually, that they're on prophetically. As they begin to step out and step into the fullness of what Christ has for them, you'll see a transition begin to come into their lives. Uh, That changing atmosphere, that changing moment in time. And uh, I wish I could tell you it was just one change, that it was just one moment. But you know what? The, The ongoing life of the believer is a life of change, a life of transition, a life of transformation. That everything is changing, everything is in motion, Things are happening right now around the world and we need to be attuned to it. We need to have our our hearts to the ground so that we can hear the sounds of glory that are being released in the nations of the world. There's a sound of boots, boots on the ground, boots coming over the hill, boots ready to do battle, ready to do war. I said that the starting point, the starting point for every believer is a place called discipleship. Discipleship is laying that foundation in the heart of every believer, laying the foundational truths with the blood and the cross and the upper room, the power of the Holy Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit in operation. These foundational truths will hold you and will last and they'll work with you as you, they, they lay a foundation in your heart. They lay that foundation for successful Christian living. That's what discipleship is all about. Discipleship is done at the local level. It's done by every believer. We are all called to make disciples. We need to know what it is we're called to do and how we're to do it. We need to make a full use of our take, make full use of our ministry. Uh, we're to do the work of an evangelist. We're to make disciples. That's what it's all about. It's the plan of multiplication and duplication. After the new believer has been discipled and that foundation has been truly laid, and then they move into a place of mentoring. And, you know, many times as I travel around the country and around the world, people will come to me and they'll talk to me about mentoring them. But after I have a a brief conversation with them, I realize that they have never been discipled. And you know what? You can't really mentor someone who has not been discipled because they don't have that foundation laid in their life that can help them walk these foundational truths out in the land of living, in the here and now, to prove these things and to test these things that have been taught from books and really made in a practical way, putting boots on the ground and really beginning to make change and bring forth difference and change. And and that's what we really need to do. We need to go from discipleship to mentoring, then mentoring to achievement, achievement to leadership and leadership to legacy. When I talk to you about mentoring, that's the honing in of your gift. That's when someone else uh, recognizes the gift and the call of God that's on your life. And they begin to grab a hold of you and identify that gifting and calling and they begin to work with you and they begin to hone that in like metal uh, sharpeneth iron. 
They begin to hone that gift in. Work with you, talk with you. Bring that gifting to the forefront because see, your gift will make a place for you. So as we begin to do that and set it in place, something wonderful begins to happen as doors begin to open in your heart, first and foremost. But you know what? Your gift will make a place for you and it'll open up the doors to the nations of the world. You'll go before great men, before kings, before governmental leaders, displaying and operating the gifts and the power of the Holy Spirit. We need to know who we are and what gifts we have at our disposal. The power of God made real is that anointing that that anointing that makes all that that sweet anointing, that precious anointing, that makes all the difference in the world, that, that makes it so ordinary men can do extraordinary things. It's the enablement, the empowerment, the endowment from heaven that's relieved on the, released on the life of the believer that empowers us to do the work of ministry, that empowers us to walk in the gifts and the power of the Holy Spirit, to walk in the presence of God and the power of God. The presence of God and the power of God, that's the, the glory of God. And there's sounds of glory that are being released in the earth today. I said it's discipleship, then mentoring. But then after mentoring, we move into a place of achievement. An achievement is when the in the life of the believer now, he begins to take what was given to him in the classroom, in the training seminars, in the Bible school, uh, in the discipleship programs, and they begin to work with, they begin to work with this thing called achievement. And achievement is when you go out and begin to test those theories with the real life experience. And they begin to walk in their gifting, walk in their calling, walk in their anointing. As they begin to do that, they begin to achieve, they begin to, to, to do something with the works. You know, I, I can appoint you a leader. But in order for you to truly become a leader in the eyes of those who follow you, sooner or later, you have to put your hand to the plow and you have to be able to achieve something, achieve something on your own, be able to merit something, be able to walk in the anointing, to walk in the gifting, to walk in the calling, to the walk in that place of achievement. And when you're in that place of achievement, it's almost like a flowing that goes with you. You know you're doing what you're called to do. You know you're walking in the, in the presence of God, in the power of God. There, there's an ease when you're walking in the anointing. There's an ease when you're walking in the glory. There's an ease when you're walking in who you are and what you're really about. And that's that ease that comes with achievement. But in this session, I want to talk to you about leadership. See, you get to a point in your own walk and in your own life when you begin to walk in achievement, but how much can you achieve? How much can you do yourself? What is it you can touch? You can only, you can actually only achieve what you can put your hands to. Sooner or later, when you're in that step of achievement, you come to the reality that in order for you to produce more fruit and fruit that lasts, you're going to have to step into a place of leadership. Leadership is altogether different. Leadership is, just take a little closer look at leadership. Leadership is when the achiever and the overachiever has finally reached their goals. They come to the reality that they can only do so much with their own hands. In order to be more productive, they need to step into their place of management, into their place of leadership. The achiever has no problem managing themselves. But now can they motivate and manage others? They must focus on equipping and empowering, teaching and coaching. That's what it's all about. That's what mentoring is about. That's what leadership is about. That's empowering, equipping, enabling, focusing on teaching and coaching others. It's about the team. It's all about the team. At the achievement level, the focus is all on the personal productivity. But at the leadership level, it's the name on the front of the jersey, not the one on the back of the jersey. Instead of me, it's us. No longer what can I do, but what can we do? It's not about my vision, but it's about our vision. Something changed in the heart of the leader. There's been a heart change, a heart positional change. Leadership mentoring simply looks like this. And Jesus walked in leadership mentoring. 
This is what it looks like. I do, you watch. We do it together. You do it and I watch. Finally, I release and empower you into your destiny. Now I watch you do it and I see you walk it out and work it out. I see you walk in the fullness of who you are. There's a reward in that for me and a reward in that for you. And a reward in that for everyone who sees it, touches it, does it. Because now you're walking in who you are. Now you are testing and proving the principles that you received during your training. And you're putting them together for live action. You're putting them together for productivity. You're putting them together for personal achievement. And now you're stepping into a place of leadership. I do it, you watch. We do it together. Then you do it. And I watch. Finally, I release you. I empower you. I enable you. I equip you. I release you. Many times, the highest achievers, they don't make the best coach. Most of the time, because their ego, their own desire for personal achievement, teaching, coaching, leadership development all require patience to walk with and to work with someone else. To walk with them and to walk out their destiny call, their place, their position, their posture in the body of Christ. There are things that we're looking for in a leader. What are you looking for in a leader? And I asked the Lord, what are you looking for in a leader? And he told me that he's looking for the basics first. Looking for four different things. Let me tell, talk to you about them right now. One, the basics. The Christian foundation of discipleship. Mentoring. The second thing. Character, evidence of the fruit of the Spirit in the life of the new believer. Number three, looking for skills, applicable skills and giftings and talents and ability, all wrapped up and rolled into one. When you begin to see that talent and ability and you see the way they embrace it with the gift and the call and the skill and you begin to put it together, now you know you have something to work with. Number four, that talent and ability in fact, talent and ability is the last thing that I'm looking for. I'm looking for the foundational things, much more important than that, the basic things of discipleship. The blood, the cross, the power of the Holy Spirit, the spiritual giftings, the fruit of the Spirit. You know what? He's much more interested in the fruit of the Spirit than he is in the gifts of the Spirit. It's easy for somebody to receive an impartation and receive the gift. It's a whole lot different to have the fruit of the Spirit worked into the heart and the life of a believer by the power of the Holy Spirit, walking it out, working it out. Something wonderful happens in that realm. Character is not something that you can buy. Character is something that you are. And character is something that you become. I'm looking for character. He's looking for character. He's looking for the evidence of the fruit of the Spirit. Not fruitcake and nuts, but the fruits of the Spirit. And I'm looking and he's looking for skills and ability, talent and giftings. As I begin to look for that, and I begin to see talent and ability, I want you to know that I can always hone that in. I can always teach that. But character is not something you can teach. I'm looking for that talent. I'm looking for those basic, those foundational truths. I'm looking for somebody who can walk out the life of a true disciple. I'm also looking for somebody, number five, who is the no problem anointing. Come on now. I'm not looking for the person who can just identify the problem. I'm looking for the person who has the solution to the problem. We don't pay for identifying problems. We pay for the solution how we're going to solve this problem, how we're going to solve this circumstance, this situation. What am I looking for in the leader? The basic. A Christian foundation of discipleship. What's that? That's the word. That's prayer. That's character. That's grounding. That's balance. Unity. I'm looking for a servant's heart. I'm looking for somebody that understands spiritual authority. I'm looking for somebody that has suitable spiritual gifts. And I'm looking for somebody that's of my tribe. I'm the tribe of hungry. 
It's, it's for me. I'm much more pasturing the the horses than I am the sheep. I'm looking for the ones that are ready to go to battle, the ones that are ready to go to war. I'm looking for somebody who's strong in the word, who's strong in prayer, has a legitimate prayer life, who's grounded and balanced in the word, who has a servant's heart. I'm not looking for slaves and servants, but I'm looking for sons and daughters that have a servant's heart. Understanding spiritual authority. Someone who has suitable spiritual gifts to the opportunity that I have at hand. And I'm looking for somebody from the tribe of Hungary. What are they going to manifest? Character. That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for character. Manifesting character and integrity. Manifesting the fruit of the Spirit. What is that? In Galatians, love, patience, faithfulness, joy, kindness, humility, peace, goodness, self-control. Other key traits are loyalty, dependability, faithfulness, truthfulness, hard working, and honesty. That's right. These are things that are important. As you begin to see character made manifest in the life of the believer, you're going to see love, patience, joy, kindness, humility, faithfulness. I'm looking for somebody that's faithful. The Lord is faithful. He's looking for faithful leaders. I'm looking for somebody who manifests peace, even in the midst of turmoil. People who know how to step into shalom, even in the midst of chaos. When everything around them is on the edge, on the very, very edge, they know how to keep that peace that's in their heart, that perfect peace that goes beyond all understanding. They know how to meter it out and they know how to walk it out. They have an understanding of self-control. They also need some other key character traits. Are you looking for someone in your life? If you were looking for a leader now, would you be looking for someone who's loyal, who's dependable, who's faithful, who's truthful, who's honest? Truth and honesty, that's a foundation. That's a foundation for any relationship that you lay. I don't care if it's your primary relationship with your spouse. I don't care if it's a relationship with your, uh, with, with your boss, with your children, with uh, peers, uh, no matter what. That relationship must be built on a foundation of truth and honesty, character and integrity. That's what we're looking for and that's what we need. Character is key. How do I recognize character? Are they loyal? Are they dependable? Are they faithful? Are they truthful? Are they hardworking? Are they honest? Are they teachable? Are they available? Do they have a positive attitude? Do I see in them a desire to excel? Because I'm looking for people who want to do well. I'm looking for people who are, who are not afraid to be stretched to the very limit. Because the sweetest fruit on the tree doesn't come by the trunk of the tree. It comes out on the limb. It's just beyond your reach, but not within your grasp. It's something that you can grab a hold of, but it's not something easy to hold on to. You have to press into it. You have to walk it out. You have to understand it. I'm looking for those key character traits. I'm also looking for skills. Skills and ability. What kind of skills am I talking about? Well, if I'm looking for a leader, leaders work with people. So I'm looking for somebody that has people skills. Most of the time when I pick a leader, I'm picking a leader who needs to be parented or reparented. So I'm usually looking for a leader who has parenting skills. Many times I need someone who has technical skills or marketing skills, or decision-making skills, money management skills, educational skills, team-building skills. When I said relational skills, I'm talking about like conflict resolution, being able to fully and wholly walk out the conflicts that come in your life, specialty expertise, uh, expertise education, money management. As I begin to walk these out and see these skills and identify these skills in another person, I can begin to hone them in. That's like iron, rubbing against iron, until it prepares the heart and the life of that believer to manifest the fullness of the skill, talent, and ability that's inherent in them. You know what? I'm looking for the good in the individual. You know what? When you, you go into a mine and you're mining diamonds, you know, you, you're, you're mining gold. You have to take out a ton of dirt 
to even get an ounce, to even get one ounce of gold. But I'm not looking for the dirt. I'm looking for the gold. I'm shooting for the gold. I'm keeping my eyes focused, focused in on the goal, on the goals that God's laid before me, on those things that he's put before me, those things that he's laid out before me. What else am I looking for? Talent and ability. Talent and ability, there's nothing more prevalent in our society today than talented people, than educated people, than knowledgeable people. They're everywhere around us. I can teach talent and ability. But the things that I'm looking for are those inherent things about character and integrity. That's what I'm looking for. And that's what you should be looking for when you're looking for in a leader. When that's what he's looking for. Hey, but I'm also looking for that. No problem anointing. You know what? There's a lot of situations, a lot of problems that arise. Things that need to be dealt with and need to be handled. I remember one of the most powerful men in our ministry, the vice president of ministry, actually named Miguel Simon. He used to have a little button and he used to say, that's easy. And every time I called on something that was very difficult for him to handle, he just press in that lever and that lever would remind him that that's easy. No problem. I'm looking for the no problem. Anointing. I'm looking for the problem solvers. I'm looking for the ones that are going to go the distance. I'm looking for the ones that are teachable, the ones that are available, the ones that are willing to work. I'm looking for those that are hungry because I'm in the tribe of hungry. And hungry hearts, I know that there's a commanded blessing that comes on the hungry heart, that they're going to receive their blessing. Sometimes we feel like we're, we're really not called to lead. But the Word of God tells us that we are the head and not the tail. The moment people hear that you and I are a Christian, whether it's at work, whether it's at school, once they hear we're a Christian, we become a leader whether we like it or not. We are a leader. Why? Because our life is on display. They begin to look. They want to know what a Christian looks like, what a leader looks like. Is he a leader? Does he really have influence? Does he really live his life like a leader? How do one of these Christian leaders look? How do they act? They're trying to figure that out too. I tell you, as you begin to walk this this destiny, this prophetic journey to your spiritual destiny. There, there are at least five steps, and most of the time we're going in one and out of another. We're in some place of change, transmission, uh, the transition, uh, transformation. These changing times and seasons and moments, we're usually going out of one and going into the other. We're usually going out one door and opening up another. You know what? God doesn't close one door unless he's going to open another. He knows how to open doors. He knows how to open up doors that no man can shut. What I need to do is you know how to hear him, know how to follow his leading, to know how to listen to the voice of the Spirit. Because those that are led by the Spirit of God, they're the sons of God. And that's what we're looking for. We're looking for sons and daughters, not slaves and servants, but sons and daughters who know how to walk out their calling in their gifting area, who know how to walk it out in the midst of chaos, in the midst of change, at the speed of change. When everything in this world is being turned upside down, he's turning the church right side up so that his people will be on the top, so his leaders will be on the bottom, equipping, empowering, enabling, building into the kingdom. And the way you build into the kingdom is you build into men and women. You build into men and women. They are the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is within. As I begin to build into men and women of God, now I'm building the kingdom of God. As you begin to build the kingdom of God, something wonderful happens. You begin to extend and advance the kingdom. And you know what? There's a battle that's raging right now between the, the kingdom of good and evil, the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light. It's time for you and I to understand who we are, what we're called to do, how we're supposed to walk, and to walk this thing out. To walk it all the way out and all the way into the fullness of our destiny calling. Starting out with discipleship, mentoring, achievement, leadership, legacy. I'm going to talk to you in a minute about legacy. But you know what? You need to be a leader. You're called to be a leader. You're called to be the head and not the tail. You're called to rise up and to lead. 
You're called to walk in the forefront, not in the background. This is the hour for leaders to come to the forefront. You know, at Lee Iacocca, in his latest book, he said, where are my leaders? Where are the leaders in North America? Where are the great leaders today in our, in our institutions of, of higher learning? Where are our leaders today in business? Where are they? It's time for the leaders to come out of the cave. It's time for the leaders to come alive, to do what they're called to do, to lead, to be people of influence, to be people of impact, to be bold and to be courageous. That's what we're called to do. I want to thank you for joining me today as we took a little walk down the walk of leadership. I'm going to come back in just a little bit. I'm going to talk to you about legacy. That's fruit and fruit that last. But you know what? We need to see. We need to hear. We need to know. We need to put the pieces of the puzzle together. You and I need to walk it out and work it out. I want to thank you today for joining me on the Elisha Project. Joining me as you walk this journey. This journey that every man and every woman go on, this prophetic journey that we're walking out today, let him begin to put that sign and symbol on your heart. Let him begin to brand you with the revival fire. Let him begin to turn you inside out, right side up, so you're able to walk out the fullness of the call. I believe in you. I trust you. I know that you can do it. I know that you can lead. This is your time to lead. This is your moment to lead. And Father, I thank you. I thank you for my brothers and sisters that are there watching today, that are out there, that are all across this listening audience today. Father, I release a fresh anointing for leadership upon them now, a fresh empowerment, a fresh endowment from heaven. Father, that the anointing to lead would rest upon them, that the spirit of the leader would come upon them, and would be released into their lives, bringing healing and bringing hope, strength, courage. Now, Lord, release it to them now. Release that fresh anointing to them now. Now, Lord, fresh impartation, fresh empowerment. It's new, Lord. It's new to them. Father, let your hand of blessing, let your hand of favor rest upon them. Wherever they go and whatever they do, let your favor rest upon them now. Let the favor and the love of the Lord rest upon them. Bless them, Lord, physically, spiritually, emotionally, financially. Let your blessing overtake them now. In Jesus' name, amen. Again, thank you for joining me today on the Elisha Project. As we talked and shared about leadership, I'm going to be back in just a little bit and talk to you some about legacy. And that's fruit and fruit that lasts. You have a great day now. God bless you. Thank you for watching this episode of Living on the Edge. Eagle Worldwide Ministries offers a variety of resources to strengthen the body of Christ. For more information, check our website at www.eagleworldwide.com or call us at 905-308-9991. God bless.